Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. On Roku, the vanity code is Dwyer Boxing News, right? We're in the sports section. On iTunes, one word, same thing, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, the WBO has announced that they're going to have a title fight at middleweight. Let's pay close attention to the middleweight division. Right? This title fight is between Andy Lee and Matt Koroboff. Now understand, both of these guys have been around for years. You might recall that Andy Lee fought Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. many years ago. Right now, in an earlier video, I pointed out that Janady Golovkin has had a belt since 2010 at middleweight. He has not fought either of these two guys, nor did he fight Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Right? Boxing needs to stop the strand of fighters having belts for years, but yet somehow navigating around all of the major fighters in their weight class. Well, let's talk about this fight. You know, for me, there's a big question, and it's huge, on whether Andy Lee is still Andy Lee. Now, I told you before the Nonino Denier, Nicholas Walters fight, that I didn't believe Nonino Denier was still Nonino Denier. Right? The sad part of boxing in fact the sad part of life is that reflexes diminish over time and keep in mind reflexes are a big part of sports like boxing in other words you can train you can be disciplined between fights but if you're slow to react to an opponent if you don't have the same response time as you did when you were a younger man then you might not be as effective I want everyone here to focus on Andy Lee's last fight against John Jackson right I thought that fight was a disaster now as I like to say knockouts cause amnesia and all everyone remembers is Andy Lee ending that fight in the fifth round right with a great KO. No question Andy Lee can punch. I thought Andy Lee looked great in the first round against Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Right? The problem with that Jackson fight, though, are the four other rounds. Understand Andy Lee got decked in that fight. Had to get up off the canvas. Understand Jackson was stalking Andy Lee, and Andy Lee wasn't doing a good job of getting away or of defending himself. Right? The problem is Andy Lee has been in some wars. There's tread on the tires. And Andy Lee seems to be getting hit way too much for my taste. Right? So there was even talk, by the way, of Andy Lee losing weight, fighting at 154. Right? I believe the people around Andy Lee understood he was getting hit too much. Now here he is fighting an unbeaten fighter. Let's talk about Matt Korobov. He's unbeaten and people need to know his track record. Understand this is a guy who is the former world amateur champ at middleweight. Understand he won the world championship as an amateur in 2005. Now you have to ask yourself, why was he, the Russian champ, in 2004 passed over for his country's Olympic birth? You also have to ask yourself, how's a guy who is unbeaten and who is an amateur champ, right, back in 2005, nine years ago, an eternity for boxing, only now getting a title shot? only now emerging on the world stage, right? Frankly, too, you have to ask yourself, who has he fought? 
When you look at his record, you're going to see names like Grady Brewer, Ossie Duran, right? You're not going to see a lot of elite guys at middleweight, right? Let's be up front now and talking about how guys these days are more protected than they were in the past, right? Now, Karabov is what I call a chess player. He's a deconstructionist. He stands in front of you. I've posted a video of him moving on his back foot. He can back away from you. He figures out your punch pattern. And then he starts to exploit it. He's adaptive, reactive. He's actually pretty clever in the ring. There's a reason why he's unbeaten. Let me just say he is a very dangerous opponent for the better known Andy Lee. What I like with Karabov too is that Karabov includes the body in his attack. Right? And I like the fact that his punches are wired to his legs. So as you're coming forward and he's backing up, he's still able to throw withering shots to your body. Right? The problem with Korobov is he's too much of a chess player. Andy Lee's the kind of guy who'll come out and try to knock you out in the first round. Right? Guys with punching power use that punching power. For Korobov, the game is chess, right? He's there beating you up, but he doesn't step on the gas. He doesn't try to take you out. He tries to chop you down. That gives his opponents a lot of time to try to come back in fights. His last fight went the full 10 rounds. Brady Brewer made it the full 8 rounds. Right, betting on Karabov by KO is fraught with risks, not because the guy lacks talent, but because you could be staggering in front of the guy and the guy won't step on the gas. He's very patient. He'll hit you with the bomb, and while you're there bent over, wincing from a shot to your rib cage, he'll look at you. He'll move into position for his next shot. He won't jump on you. Right, let me just say, this fight intrigues me greatly. It's taking place in Las Vegas in December. It's a 12-rounder because it's a championship fight. The bet I like, and it's going to be controversial, and I haven't seen posted odds. The fight has been announced within the last 24 hours. If the odds allow it, the bet I like is Andy Lee by KO, because he always has a puncher's chance, hedged with Korobov to win the fight. Right? Korobov, quite frankly, even though he is older than Andy Lee, think about that. Right? Korobov is a southpaw like Andy Lee. He shouldn't be thrown off by the orientation. And in my opinion, he's the better boxer than Andy Lee. There's a height dynamic in the fight. Andy Lee 6'2", Karabov's 5'11". Andy Lee is going to try to use length on Karabov and movement. The problem I have with that is Andy Lee looked so bad to me in his last fight that I wonder, just like I wonder with Jermaine Taylor, I wonder whether Andy Lee, at this stage of his career, has the coordination and the reflexes to pull off a stick-and-move fight. I doubt it. Right? So, I think when they actually start to box, I think Karabov is going to get the upper hand. Right? So, if the odds allow it, I like Lee by KO, Karabov simply to win. I'm expecting Karabov to be the underdog. But if the gamblers are on this one, and there's sharks in the water, 
if people figure out that this Karabov guy is actually a ringer, right? A great chess player, right? If they figure out this Karabov guy actually has a very successful amateur pedigree and has somehow flown under radar, then the bet I'm going to recommend, and again, it's controversial, if the odds don't allow the first bet, then the riskier play I'm going to take is both guys by KO. I know Karabov carries guys. No mistake about it. But when I see a fighter like Andy Lee, who seems to fall apart after a few rounds, right, who fell apart early in his last fight against a guy who I didn't think had great hand speed, Right, when I see an older guy with a little bit too much wear on the tire, I have to ask myself, how's this guy going to go the distance against a guy who is committed to throwing to the body? Who is committed to adjusting his game to what his opponent is bringing? Now let me talk about the flaws of Karabov. He doesn't move particularly well. Right? He you know, walks around the ring, he's front foot and back foot, right? But not a lot of foot speed. You don't see him dancing away from you. He's not an up-on-his-toes guy. I don't think he'll ever be one. Understand, he's in his 30s now. But I don't think that'll matter against Andy Lee because after a few rounds, Andy Lee goes flat-footed, right? That might matter against Hassan and Jikum. It doesn't matter here. I think Karabov is a live underdog. I think you need to pay attention to this fight. My preferred play, if the odds allow it, is Andy Lee by KO Hedge with Karabov to win the fight. Right? My secondary play, if the odds don't allow the first play, is to take both guys by KO. I question Andy Lee at this point in his career. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Let's discuss this fight. Let's discuss Karabov, a fresh face on the world scene. Right? Leave your comments for us here. Tell us how you see the fight. Tell us style-wise what you think I'm overlooking. Tell me why Andy Lee, who has a committed audience, doesn't have a bit too much tread on the tire. Let me hear from you. Too much wear on the tire. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.